Hey guys, welcome back to another episode of the Aussie Flipper. My name's Matt Diedrich and I am an online reseller. What that means is I'll buy a product for the sole purpose of flipping it online for a profit. Hey, awesome to have you to join me today. Firstly, a big thank you for clicking on this video. This is gonna be a jam-packed episode. Not only am I gonna give you my 10 best sold items as I always do, but it's the first of November. So I'm gonna take you through all of my October sales numbers to hopefully give you a bit of an idea about how it looks for a very early days reseller, two months into the game, we're at full time. Um, I've got the numbers, I wanna show you it, hopefully you get some value out of it. Look guys, if you are here for the very first time, I've had this YouTube channel for a couple of months now, and I'm doing three videos a week, basically talking about everything to do with reselling. I'll do a trip to the thrift on a Thursday, this what sold video on a Sunday, and then on a Tuesday, I'll give you my best hints, tips and tricks to hopefully help you out there get better at the game of online reselling. So if you're into it by any means, uh, casual, full-time, part-time, whatever, Go ahead and hit that subscribe button. Give this video a like. I'm hoping you get some value out of it. I'm excited for this episode. A lot of information to get through to you. So let's jump into it. Okay, I'm gonna kick the episode off with my favorite piece of furniture to flip, and that is the bedside tables. Now, I have three key things that I look for when I buy my bedside tables to flip, and that is solid hardwood, no damage, and something unique about it. Now, the vertical horizontal slats on the top drawer was my uniqueness. There was no damage to this, and it was solid hardwood. So I bought this one for $60 on Facebook Marketplace because it was ticking all the boxes. And then within a few days, guys, again, a $150 sale on this one. So I've been able to make a $90 profit because it was within the criteria that I look for because that simply just goes and sells. Um, so I made a $90 profit on a piece of furniture. Pretty regular thing for me in the furniture game, buying around the 50 mark, selling for around the 150 mark. And this one's sort of there and thereabouts with the $90 profit. So awesome one to kick off the episode. I do highly encourage anyone playing in furniture for the very first time to play within those three sort of criteria areas and obviously stick with sort of smaller items like bedside tables. Um, happy to get the first result there, $90 profit on the bedsides. If I can do a few of those each week, I'm generally gonna have a pretty good sales week. The second item of the day, guys, is this really nice stylish desk I was able to pick up off Facebook Marketplace for just $25. Now, I did some research on this one. It was actually worth $180 from Amart Furniture. So a really great result to pick it up for just the 25. Now, this one didn't need too much work done to it. I only gave it a really light clean, and then this one was back on within the space of a couple of days. And within the space of a few days, it was able to actually resell for $120. So I made a $95 profit here again on another piece of furniture. And I really do encourage the bedside tables and the desks are two really great categories of furniture to play in. Um, this one ticked all the boxes on what I was looking for. $180 new, I was able to get that margin and find a good middle ground of about 120 in sale price. And sure enough, really fast turnover this one sold. So look, can't encourage furniture flipping enough, um, guys. It's a really great profitable category to get into and it's also a fast sale. So delivered this one locally, it wasn't too far away, um, made it free delivery because it was so close. Um, so $120 sale price, 95 profit, a very, very good item to have a look out for. Next item up guys are these Nike Pro exercise women's shorts uh, that I was able to pick up in just last Thursday's trip to the thrift actually. So this one only cost me $3.85 on average. I had a very low purchase day, a low purchase cost per item day I should say. Um, so $3.85 for these, I thought that was an absolute steal. The Nike brand, obviously gonna sell well. Women's exercise clothing, and especially shorts leading into the summertime. These were gonna be a fast sale item. Now, I whacked these on eBay for $18.99 plus postage, and they have sold uh, within the space of just two days, actually, so a very fast sale. Um, $19, pay, take off the $3.85. I made about 15 bucks here. Obviously, take some fees. Let's call it $12.50 in profit. Um, so a really, really fast, quick, good result. Um, maybe could have put a few more dollars on this one and put it at maybe 22, 23 by now, but I was happy to get the quick sale. I'm really interested in that turn and burn philosophy of just getting your item, listing it, making profit, and keep moving on. It's all about cash flow and keeping capital to reinvest back into the business. So to do that with these Nike shorts in the space of just two days, I was really happy with it. Um, obviously look out for exercise clothing, look out for the women's brands, they do sell well, but Nike will always be a fast mover. Um, so happy to get the result there with the exercise shorts. Now about a month ago, guys, I was wrapped to find these Hoka One One Bondi 4 women's running shoes in the op shop for just $10. Now, I don't like to pay more than $10, but when I'm finding the Hokers, I'm always happy to pay. 10 bucks, turn this one into a $45 sale price on eBay within the space of just a little over a month. Now, there was some wear and tear on the soles of these, and I would say normally you'd get about $60 to $70 for a pair of used Hokers. Um, but with the worn sole, I knew that I was gonna get a bit less, and to end up with 45 plus postage, 
um, was I think I, I still think a pretty good result with these because I've profited 35, take some fees, I've saved a little bit on the postage charge as well. I think it works out to about a $32 profit after your fees and, and everything taken out. So happy to get anything over a $30 profit when I'm in the shoe world. Um, so Hoka's ASICs, they're always a great category to play in. They're always a great shoe brand to get into, um, both the Hoka and the ASICs. Um, so to see these and to get that result of $32 profit in on eBay, um, was just an awesome result for the shoes. I was wrapped when I found this one on Facebook Marketplace for just $30. It was a Sony home audio system. Now they asked obviously just a 30, I wasn't gonna drop them any lower than that because that was an absolute steal of a price. Um, now this one was retailing for about 250 and I knew that before I even went over there and checked it out. So I knew I had to go quick or somebody else was gonna swoop in and grab it. There was nothing wrong with it. The audio was great, the condition of it was great. It was, it was ready to resell. Um, and I listed it up for $200 on Facebook. It was a bit of an outlandish type uh, listing price, but I thought I'd give it a go. Now, I've got a lot of offers around 150. I couldn't actually get anyone to commit to it and come across and buy it for 150, but I ended up getting a deal done for $120 and it sold just this morning. So a really nice end to the week. It's for, To be fair, it's been a fairly slow week and I had to really work away at this sale to get it done to kind of top up my week just slightly. But $120 sale price, $90 profit, buying it for the 30. It was a good piece of uh, electronic and it was worth a, a bit more to be fair. I probably could have got that 150 if I held out, but the pressure of the end of the month and a really slow week caused this one to fall for 120. But hey, a $90 profit, you can't complain with that. Another pair of shoes, guys, that I was able to pick up in a shoe haul, actually. They were the Nike Zoom Pegasus 35s. Now, I think there were about 15 pairs of shoes that I bought for $15 each in this deal. And they were new and near new Nike and ASIC shoes. So awesome to buy off Facebook Marketplace. It was a great deal to get my hands on. I was able to sell this specific pair of shoes for $50. Now, what I will say is I had them on eBay for about 75 to 80 on memory, and they couldn't move, but that was what the comps were saying, sort of 75 to 80. So to sell them on Facebook Marketplace for just 50 bucks to make a 35 profit, I have gone probably unders on this pair of shoe because it was in very, very good condition. But at the end of the day, to make a $30 plus profit, as I always say with a pair of shoes, I'm generally pretty happy with that. And because I've now got quite a number of shoes backlogged to sell, obviously with that shoe haul of 15, I was just happy to get rid of it, move it on, get on to the next one. It's just my philosophy at the moment. Um, maybe it will change down the line, but happy to get the deal done there for 50 bucks for a pair of shoes on resale when I bought it for just 15. Now here's an item to keep an eye out for in the op shops guys, because whenever I've found them, they've gone on to sell very, very well and pretty quickly on eBay. They were the Focus Rollerblades. Now these were a kid's size, three to six. Um, I bought another pair in the past and they had sold for $60. So that was my, I guess, thought process going into the resale of these. I've gone $59.99, buy it now on eBay, free postage. And that's exactly what they've sold for. Don't you love it when they don't knock you down and you get the full price? $59.99, I'm gonna take out some postage on this and make it a $44 sale price. $5 was the initial purchase price, so that brings it down to 39. And then we've got to take out about six bucks in fees. So let's just say $33 profit here on these rollerblades. Now they sold within the space of just eight days, guys. So definitely one to look out for when you're in the op shops, buy the rollerblades, whether it be adult or child, because they always sell. I've had two pairs of uh, skates now for about that $60 uh, purchase price off eBay. So uh, it's a good one to get your hands on. Keep an eye out for it when you're in the op shops, because they're always around that $5 mark whenever you're in there. So so have a look, grab it, resell on eBay, you get about 60 bucks for it. Now there's a little bit of a story around this next item. I was able to sell these Tommy Hilfiger bleaker jeans for just $40 on uh, Facebook Marketplace. So I bought them in an op shop for five bucks and I made a $35 profit in a very, very short turnaround. So I was happy to get the fast result here on a pair of jeans. Tommy Hilfiger is always gonna sell well. But the story that I have for you is that he came to the house and I, for the very first time, thought, what if he's into Tommy Hilfiger in general? What if there's an Apollo shirt that I could offer him? So I asked the question when he came to the house, I said, would there be anything else that you might be interested in? Long story short, he's bought another polo off me, Tommy Hilfiger, and I've given it to him for just 20 bucks. So I've got a $60 sale price here for two items of clothing when he was only initially coming for that $40 sale price. So I've managed to get an extra 20 bucks by just simply asking the question, what else would you like? And I think that's the benefit of Facebook Marketplace is that you can talk to them face to face when they come to the house and just see if there's anything else out there. Have a bit of a think before that person arrives, what might they be interested in? And then just raise it with them. If they say no, they say no. But I thought I'd put this into the episode and, and tell that story that if you do ask the question, you might be able to get another sales uh, result 
and see your sales numbers spike. So awesome to get the result on two Tommy Hill figures, uh, 60 bucks in my pocket for this one. This next item came from the $50 thrift challenge I put up a couple of weeks ago. It was the Nordica men's polo shirt that I was able to find in the op shop for just $4. Now I'll put the link here for that $50 thrift challenge. I basically went in with a $50 note and tried to come up with as many items as I could possibly get for the most resale value. Now I wanted to get as much as I could out of this polo shirt because it does go towards the results of that video. But in the end, it was a $30 free postage scenario. So I had to fork out $7.70 for postage. Um, so that brought it down to a $22.30 sale price for this polo shirt. So when you take out the $4 purchase, I've made $18.30. It's Facebook Marketplace. There's no fees whatsoever. Um, ticking along with that $50 thrift challenge, there's a few items that have sold. Hopefully the end of it is not too far away and I can bring you the results in its entirety. But uh, basically that Nordica uh, polo brand is a good one to get your hands on because a lot of people are searching for it. And uh, if you can find it at that $4 mark, you're gonna make a few bucks. Now I've got a brand here for you guys to be on the lookout for and I'm gonna get the pronunciation wrong, but let's just say Caray. So these Caray uh, long sleeve men's uh, t-shirt, uh, these retail for quite a bit of money and I don't come across them too much in the op shops, but they do sell in places like Culture Kings here in Australia and the retail on this specific top might be $80, $90, something like that. So when I found the brand, I thought I'd just grab it, see how it went on resale. It's not something that I've bought in the past, but I did for the very first time come across it. So I did buy it. I think I bought it for about $5 on memory, um, but I've ended up selling this for $29.99 plus postage on eBay. So I made a good 20 odd dollars here on this one and it has sold within the space of a month. So the turnaround wasn't too bad, uh, but I've got a quite a number of other items of this brand on eBay and they're getting a lot of views. I'm getting a, a big view count for this brand. So I'm, I'm thinking that they're gonna sell pretty well as well, but this one was sort of the first of the bunch that was able to move. It did take 28 days, but it did sell for the full price. They didn't knock me down on an offer sold for the $29.99 plus postage. So I've come away with a pretty good result there of about $23, $24, I think it was. Um, so cool one there, look out for it. I personally haven't come across it too much, but if you do, definitely grab it because it does sell well on eBay. So they are my 10 best sold items of the week and I did touch on it earlier. It has been a relatively slow week of selling for me. You're not always gonna get the biggest and the best weeks possible. So for me, this week was certainly a quiet week and it wasn't the week I wanted to be a quiet week because it was the last week of October. It was my chance to get as many sales as I could in so I could bring you some great results on this Sunday episode where I do my October monthly breakdown. So we're about to get that in a moment, but I did just wanna show you what I did for the entirety of this week, albeit that we are at about midday here on Sunday. So you never know, the afternoon and the evening tonight might boost these sales numbers up a little bit, but in the end, I'll pull the grid up for you to have a look at. As you can see, I've only sold 20 items this week, guys. So look, I generally do a tick under 30 items every single week. So this was well and truly quite quite dramatically down on what my, my typical week would look like. My cost of goods was $232.22 this week, and that resulted in a total sales volume of $908.04. So my profit this week was just the $675. I still held that profit margin of 74%, so it wasn't as though I was doing you know, retail arbitrage and I was getting a really low profit margin. The profit margin was the same, but what the issue is, is I only sold tw you know, 20 items. Um, so if, if that was 30, it would be back to all my normal numbers, but it was just simply, I didn't sell as much as I normally do. But I don't get discouraged by that because I've been in the sales game long enough to know that when you have a bad week, the good week's only just around the corner. Um, so I'm hoping that's gonna be the case, hopefully even next week and it can rebound really, really quickly. Um, so look, not discouraged by any means, $908. If I can get that over a thousand, I'm generally pretty happy when I do over a thousand bucks in sales each week. So you never know, one or two items might drop on eBay tonight and uh, I will end up over that thousand dollars. But uh, yeah, 675 profit, I'd like that to be upwards of about 900 to 1,000, to be honest as well. So a um, bit of work to be done to get that average back up. But I thought I'd show you those as I always do, my weekly sales numbers. Um, I also wanna show you my October review. Now, the impact of that quiet week has had a slight impact, obviously, on my entire month of October. Um, so I'll jump into the numbers and give you my gross full totals. This is sort of everything. I try and really hit the grid on, on all of it. Um, I try and give you my complete sales results. I try and give you a breakdown of the items that I purchased as well, and then my profit, and then my overall paycheck. So I kind of try and give you the full lot here. Um, let's get into it. The first one is gross revenue. So strangely, I've been able to sell 124 items this month, which was exactly how many items I sold in September. 
uh, just a month ago. So the exact same number of items, my total revenue of 5,872. That's about $200 less than what it was last month. Average sale price, $43.59. Now that's impacted due to furniture. While I'm doing a lot of shoes and clothes, as you can see with these what sold videos, the average sale price of $43.59 is always bumped up because I have large furniture sales. Um, cost of goods was $1,506.70. So what that meant was my profit margin for everything was 70%. So the reason why last month it was about 73 or 74 and now it's only 70 is that this month I tried retail arbitrage for the very first time and I went out to the retail stores, bought shoes for about 60 or $70 and then sold them for about $130 odd. So the profit margin for those items was around 50%. And that's why it's dragged, you know, what is always a really good clothing flip of about 80%, the shoes brought it down to that 70% profit margin. So while my overall sales volume was down $200, because the profit margin was down 3%, it's meant that my, you know, end of day profit return is also going to be a little bit less as well. So if we go and we take a look at the fees, my eBay fees this month was $412. PayPal was $65.97 and my postage was a little less than it was last month for $467. So a few things to talk about here. Firstly, the, the eBay fees are very, very high and I've basically stuffed up there because it's been about six weeks of being full time and it was only about maybe two weeks ago that I opened up an eBay store for the very first time. So those fees are so high, not because of what's sold, but because I was paying insertion fees before I had an eBay store of $1.65 per item. And then obviously it was the sale volume and the sale price with the fees that you take out on top of that. It's pumped these eBay fees up quite considerably off last month. So I've opened up the eBay store, a $25 a month um, set up there with that. I've, I've lost the insertion fee cost, which is gonna be awesome for next month's eBay fees. Um, and the PayPal fees weren't too bad. That was just the 65, which was pretty standard, but the postage was a little bit less because I'm on this My Business Plan and the Australia Post My Business Plan is just saving money. Any way that you could possibly save money, even a dollar or two is so, so important, I'm, I'm really quickly realizing. So I'm hoping that the eBay fees won't be as bad even on the same sort of number of sales next month because I've now got the store set up. Um, so the fees, they could have been a little less. That's probably hurt me a little bit by not getting the store set up quicker. But at the end of the day, it's a lesson learned. Um, if we go into the October review of the paycheck scenario, now this is stripping out fees and it's stripping out uh, cost of goods. It, it's pretty much giving you a full picture of what I would personally take home myself. Um, so when we take out, when we firstly have a look at the revenue, it was $5,800. There was the cost of goods of $1,500. So that left me with a profit of $3,420. But then you, that's also actually taking out the 945 in fees. Um, so it, it ended up with that profit there of 3,420 at the end of the day for me. I take tax out of that to pay the tax man as you've always got to do. So that resulted in the take home there of $2,995. So that figure there, it's my paycheck and my paycheck at the end of the day put $3,000 into my bank account when you take everything out of it from a business perspective. What you don't take into consideration though when you're looking at that figure is what you're reinvesting back into the business. To make this business grow, I've got to not only get a paycheck to survive, but I've also got to use some of that paycheck to pump back into the business. And I think when you're just starting out, you need to build your inventory and you need to get as much stock, I guess, as you possibly can. So it's always a fine line. How much do you actually put back into the business and how much actually do you have in capital? And I guess that really comes to the, down to the fact of why I like to churn and burn. If I can get sales done, it means I can, whatever profit it is, I can put it back into the business quicker and I can have cash flow to actually keep sourcing items. So I really like to take best offer whenever I'm on eBay. I think that's a great thing. And I really do like to negotiate with the, the potential buyer when I'm on Facebook Marketplace just to get the deal done um, because I know that cash flow is so, so important. So look, $2,995. If we go to the next grid and have a look at my inventory, which is basically me putting back into the business, I've been able to buy 270 items this month. Now, last month it was 235 items. So I've ticked a bit of a goal there in being able to source a few more items than I'd like. Next month is definitely gonna be 300 because I think you've got to keep buying more and more. 
Um, my gross purchase was $2,523.56 and my average purchase price was $9.35. Now, $9.35 is very, very much the same as what it was last month. I think it was about $9.32. So my average sort of purchase price is, is always sort of holding to be the same. Um, furniture is obviously impacting you know, while clothes and shoes is probably a $5 purchase price, again, like that average sale price, the average purchase price is going up because of the large, you know, purchase of furniture items. So inventory, I'm not too, I'm not too disheartened around the figures there. You know, sourcing 270 items was a good month. Um, keeping it to 935 for me personally is a very, very good number. Um, and yeah, two and a half grand there. So Really, at the end of the day, guys, what what happens with these numbers is I've I've ultimately put a thousand dollars of my two thousand nine hundred ninety five dollar paycheck. I've put a thousand dollars worth back into the business. So, in the end, I've really only got week to week for the month of uh, October two thousand dollars to play with. Now, two grand. You got rent. You got all your bills. Luckily, I don't have that right right now because I'm living at home. I'm trying to build this business. I'm back in with my parents. Um, but look, two thousand dollars not going to cut it. It's it's the equivalent of a forty thousand dollar paycheck, and trying to reinvest back into the business. So you know, I'm definitely not where I need to be if I'm going to make this a sustainable full time job. But I'm going to work really really hard to try and boost these sales numbers to get it to a point where it can be that minimum fifty thousand dollar a year paycheck, and I'm even still contributing back into the business and being able to survive in my own personal life. So these numbers are telling me there's still a bit of work to do. I'm not disheartened by the fact that I'm a couple of hundred dollars less than what I was last month because I know that that's just simply the ebbs and flows of sales and I know that the November and December Christmas time is going to be a really good time to just keep charging away at it. So I'm going to, for, certainly for the next two months, I'm going to do a really, really big push to try and get my numbers up. Um, but that's a really, I guess, a really good snapshot, I guess, of all of the numbers from the purchase to the sale to the breakdown of my own personal paycheck. Um, so I'm hopefully you're, you're enjoying these sort of numbers that I'm bringing to you on a monthly basis, um, sort of trying to cater for every single figure you could possibly think of in this business. Um, there is one more tab that I have for you, and that is the sales platforms that I'm selling on. As I said, I've, I've opened up this eBay store recently, um, but ironically, or strangely, I should say, it's just really weird that the same number of items in both platforms that I sell on were the same as last month. So not only have I sold 124 items, but again, I've sold 78 of those items on Facebook and I've sold 46 of those items on eBay. But in all fairness, I really do think, while that is strange that they are the exact same numbers month to month, uh, I really do think that eBay will slightly increase and Facebook might hopefully just remain the same. Um, because with the store, I've now got 600 free listings to put in. I've probably got about 230 items listed in my eBay store. My goal for next month is to get that up to 500. Um, you do get 600 free listings, so I really should be putting a lot of time and attention into building up my base in my new eBay store. And hopefully the fees aren't too heavy on a result of that. Um, but yeah, no insertion fees. So I've got no excuses now that I've got myself set up on eBay to just start putting everything I can into the eBay store and hopefully see those numbers increase and try and cross list into Facebook and keep the zero fee set up on Facebook ticking along because that's obviously a great space to play. And if you can get sales on Facebook, that's the biggest winner I think at the end of the day. I, I still sort of rate that as my number one platform, um, but I know that I've got to put more time and attention into eBay. So that's it. That's everything. That's the full breakdown for the month of October. I hope you enjoyed it. If you've got any questions out of those numbers or any sort of curiosity points that you want to know a bit more about, obviously just let me know in the comments. But uh, I, I love to get those numbers across because not only does it sort of keep me accountable, um, but I think personally, I like seeing other resellers give out their numbers and give complete transparency. So for me to be able to do that to you and, and to you get a bit of value out of it, um, I'm, I'm pretty happy to to provide that information for you each and every each and every month. Um, so I'm gonna round it out there. That'll do me for this episode. It has been a long one. So if you are still here after all of this time, thank you very much for tuning in. Uh, let me know in the comments below what was your best sold sales item this week. I always do love to hear it. Hope you've had a great week yourself. And uh, until the next episode, we'll see you then.